What's up everyone? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be breaking down how to actually get paid by LoadUp. It's became pretty apparent through a few questions that have been popping up now and trending. And I had a pretty good conversation with an individual who seeked out some information about LoadUp because he started and I de kind of dissected that and came up with some pretty valuable information for people starting out with LoadUp. So I'll be going over, first of all, I'll first go over the two questions I've seen the most so far. After that, I'll break down the actual platforms you can use to send invoices to LoadUp. Then I'll go over the steps on how to create the invoice. I'll be using Square, but that's because that's the platform that I use. And I imagine that if you use a separate platform, it'll be somewhat similar. I can't say for sure. Uh, but it'll at least be a good guideline for you. We'll go over how to work the app, how loader points work, and giving back orders too. That's a big one as well. Stay tuned. The first question is, do you need a business license? And the simple answer is no. Uh, one of the main reasons that comes up is because when you're signing up for Square or QuickBooks, it asks you to put in a business name. Now, you'll just have to make it up uh, you can keep it simple, something like Joe's Junk Hall, or you can get a little creative with it. It's on you. The next question is, do you need a helper? That one's been a trending question as well. And yes, you 100% do need a helper to be able to do these jobs. Uh, one thing that I do, I almost specifically only get mattresses that are already sitting outside. Uh, that's the way that I get around not hiring help sometimes, but if you're doing anything um, that's going to be indoor, you definitely want help. You do not want to come across the situation where somebody says that it's just a mattress, there's no flight of stairs, but you show up and not only is there a flight of stairs, but it's like a king size mattress. You don't want to be handling that yourself. You don't want to jeopardize or put the customer's household items at risk for getting damaged. Uh, it just, it, it makes you look unprepared. So you don't wanna put yourself in that situation. So yes, you 100% need a helper. The platforms you can use on their, their employee handbook, well not employee handbook, but their, their handbook for their loaders, it says Square QuickBooks, and PayPal. And then it just says, and others. So I recommend Square, and that's only because I use it though. I know how to use it. I imagine QuickBooks and PayPal are both fairly equivalent. Uh, for me personally, it just seemed to be a little bit more on the professional side of things. So I went with Square. So sending the invoice. What you're going to do is in the top right corner, there's the plus symbol in a blue box. You're going to click that. And after you do that, you're going to click create customer. And when you do that, all you simply have to do is put in their email. Now you can put in their phone number and their address where their headquarters is, but I didn't do that. I just put in their email. Next, what you're going to do is hit the add customer and then you're going to click the load up, the customer that you just created. After that, you'll click on name and price. And what you'll simply do there is put in their PO number and how much the PO is for. For the service date, I just always do today's date, the title and invoice ID is a custom invoice ID. So all I do there is put my custom invoice, which I just go along the lines of hashtag 0001 and so on. Next, I always add an attachment of the PO that they sent me of the work that I'm sending the invoice for. That is as simple as screenshotting the email that they send you. All of the information you need is on that email. 
and then you'll simply hit send. That's how you do the invoices. Now let's get into how the app actually works. So going along the basis of the, you have the order accepted already, you have everything already set up with LoadUp, it's the day of your first order. What's going to happen is around 8 a.m., LoadUp's going to send you a text, and that text is going to simply state that by replying back to that, to that text, you're going to be in contact with the customer. So anything you say after that, the customer is going to be able to read it and respond back to you. When you're on your way, you'll simply mark en route. And when you've arrived, you'll mark arrived. When you're finished gathering all of the items and putting them into whatever equipment you have to haul the junk away, you'll hit the start closeout option. And when you do that, you're gonna be able to take your pictures and if the customer's present, you can have them sign. If the customer's not present, there's a box to check and you want to uncheck that box. That way you can complete your order without the customer signing. Next, I wanted to touch on how loader points actually work. So I, I only know a little bit about it, but what I can tell you can probably help you if you don't really know too much. So. The fellow that I actually that actually had questions about load up, he's the one that pointed this out to me because his sign up experience was a little bit different than mine and it has to be because our areas are just different in the amount of work that's available. But for him, it immediately started asking him to purchase loader points to be able to accept the jobs. Now, when the jobs first come out or the orders first come out, they'll have points and you need points enabled to accept the job. Now, eventually, uh, it can be like an hour, it can be like a day, uh, it can take any, it just depends on how long the job's even going to be available as well, because uh, I've seen jobs be available for weeks. So, uh, but that, let's say it's a a hundred dollar job it's going to take 80 points and you don't have any well eventually if nobody gets the job it's just going to fall down to zero points and you can get the job then and that job will give you points and from what i've noticed now it's an 80 dollar job you might get like close to 40 points for, for it from what i've noticed the points are kind of like half of what the monetary value might be but this is just my experience for my area. It seemed like his area was probably busier than mine, especially based on the couple jobs that were available and how high the points were to be able to get that job. And the fact that they were kind of pushing on him already to purchase the loader points, it just seemed like, yeah, you're probably in a really busy area. There's probably a lot of competition. So you can purchase loader points if necessary. I don't think it is necessary from what I've read. If you do do the loader point subscription, you're going to be in a monthly cycle and the customers are going to pay you in cash. That's pretty much all I know about loader points. So the next thing I wanted to touch on was giving back orders. And this one I learned by personal experience. I'll put up one of my recent POs on here just to show you guys what happens if you cancel the job outside of their time frame or too late. You know, one thing I've heard too is how much work it seems to be to actually even do gigs for load up. And one thing is for me personally, I grew to like it. It makes me feel more like a business. And I would just like to put that out there for other people too, so that way you know, yeah, it seems somewhat overwhelming and a little too much to just be doing a couple of gigs maybe, but if you're structuring yourself as a business already and you think it's something you wanna do, I would, you know, totally recommend it. Just go through it. Once you do it once or a couple of times, you'll totally get it and you'll probably like it just as much as I do. I think I'm gonna wrap it up here though, everybody. I wanna say thanks to everybody for watching. Like and subscribe. Happy holidays, everybody. Peace.